Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about giant ionic compounds and giant covalent compounds. Ionic compounds are held together by the very strong electrostatic force of attraction. So because they have opposite charges, they will experience an electrostatic attraction towards each other. And that's what bonds them together. Now because this electrostatic force acts in all directions, ionically bonded compounds tend to form giant ionic structures with a very regular arrangement of ions. So if we look at this sodium chloride molecule, the sodium ion won't just attract a single chlorine ion, but it will actually attract many other chlorine ions and vice versa. So you end up that with something that looks like this. If we take this purple circle to be our positive sodium ion and this green circle to be our negative chloride ion, other sodium chloride molecules will be attracted to them like so because they will also feel that electrostatic attraction. So here we have chlorine, sodium, chlorine, sodium, sodium, chlorine. So what you end up with is this lattice structure that builds up and you end up with a giant ionic lattice which in 3D would look something like this. The attractive forces between ions in the lattice are very strong and there are lots of them to overcome so it takes a lot of energy to break the lattice apart and that means that ionic compounds have very high melting points and boiling points. And in solid form, ionic compounds don't conduct electricity because the ions are held in place and can't move. But if we melt it, the ions will be free to move and a molten ionic compound can therefore conduct electricity. In addition to that, many ionic compounds will dissolve in water and the lattice is split up by the water molecules and the ions are free to move around. Therefore, solutions of ionic compounds can also conduct electricity. So they have high melting points, high boiling points, and they can conduct electricity when they're molten or when they're dissolved in solution. Moving on to covalent molecules, most covalently bonded molecules exist as small molecules. Covalent bonds are very strong, but usually the intermolecular forces between molecules are weak. So here in this diagram you have two covalently bonded atoms forming a molecule. Now the covalent bond between these two atoms is very very strong. What's weak is the bonding between molecules and there are many examples of simple covalent molecules. Hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide etc etc. The forces between those molecules are weak, whereas the covalent bonds within the molecules are strong. So you tend to find these compounds in gas or liquid form at room temperature. And they also don't conduct electricity because they have no overall charge. In contrast to this, we can also sometimes get giant covalent structures, which are solids and have very high melting points. Each atom is covalently bonded to each surrounding atom. And this forms very large structures and it is these bonds that must be overcome in order to melt it or boil it. So it is very difficult to melt or boil these giant covalent structures. Here are some examples. Here we have diamond to the right is graphite down below silicon dioxide and bottom left is a fullerene. Now diamond, graphite and fullerenes are all made of simply carbon atoms whereas silicon dioxide is silicon and oxygen. And these are very well-known examples of giant covalent structures. They each have different properties. Some of them can conduct electricity, others cannot. Some of them are very hard, others are not so hard. And we'll go into more detail on diamond, graphite and fullerenes when I do a video on the allotropes of carbon. 
So that was giant ionic and giant covalent compounds and a little bit about their properties and bonding. I hope you found it helpful. As always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and share and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.